Hey, welcome or oh, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, hopefully you are watching this intro in black and white because this is I'm doing that off the shoulder thing again that Hedda loves. This is the continuation of my pick series. And I'm absolutely delighted to once again be collabing with one of my beautiful Swedish friends, Marlin. It was her turn to choose the picture. So, if you want to find out exactly which picture inspired our looks this time, which palette or palettes were used, and what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then my darling you have the best seat in the house. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy, because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Hopefully that intro is in black and white, because this is the continuation of my photo inspiration series. Right. I would have told you in the intro that I am collabing with the beautiful Marlin again, and it was her turn to choose the pictures this time, so she sent me a bulk through to have a look through. And let me shift this round a little bit, just there, so I've got a bit more room for the picture without having to bend. That's the picture that I chose out of the ones that she sent, because it just, it, it looks magical. And I like the fact that really there's only, there's only really three main colours in this picture. You've got the brown of the trees, the blue-white of the snow, and the yellow of the sunlight, and that's pretty much it. Um, on my monitor, the snow on the ground looks like a lilac-y uh, white rather than a bluey white, but, but basically that's, that's it. And I loved the simplicity of it, and I loved how it... <laughs> Prior to all of my pain issues that I have, this is the kind of place that I would have walked through and I would have taken photos of and I would have felt inspired by. And I'd be gutted that my photos didn't anywhere near capture the beauty of what my eye was seeing. Um, and it kind of made me wistful for the days when I used to go We've got a apple and pear farm, literally like 10 minutes walk from my house. Um, and when it snowed, that used to drift at the sides right up to sort of four or five foot. So you'd be tromping through this, ooh, almost knee deep snow and it was just, the air was really crisp and cold and fresh and it stung your nose as you breathed in and it just was just I'm getting very poetic <laughs> so I decided to pull three of my Colourpop nine panels obviously the uh -huh honey for the yellows and then I've got the Mar palette which has got a really lovely cool toned brown here that I can use for the trees and then I was debating using a Jeffrey highlighter for the um, the icy blue white snow on the trees So I've just realised that I hadn't taken the sticky bit off of the mirror and I couldn't get hold of it, so tweezers are the way forward. 
but I grabbed the Blue Moon palette because it's got this beautiful blue-white shade here that I can use. Um, so, those, those are the, the palettes I'm going to be using. Um, I'm going to be using mainly two of the brushes from um, the AliExpress brush sets that I recommend, which are all detailed in the film below. My eye is very watery this side. I'm going to try and work through it because I've got a busy few days and if I don't get this filmed now and it's currently just gone 10 in the evening, if I don't get this filmed now to get it edited tomorrow because where I film, edit and export in HD a 45 minute film can take up to 5 hours to export depending on how many graphics I've added um, and then I've got to get it uploaded to YouTube So, and I've got a very busy few days and I won't be able to get this up in time if I don't get it filmed tonight which is not your problem so why am I waffling let's get you zoomed in face is washed, moisturised uh, and primed obviously I've not SPF'd it's the middle of the night well not quite the middle of the night but you know what I mean now this is a teaching channel. Because of my chronic pain, I can't blend as quickly as a lot of people. And because I want beginners to be able to follow this tutorial as easily as people who have been doing makeup for years and years and years, I, I talk you through every single stage. I don't speed things up. The only time you'll catch me speeding things up, really, is um, if I'm doing... Uh, something which will make the film ridiculously long like a cut crease and then I'll do one in slow time and I'll speed the second one up and when my eye is watering on the side it's already smudged some of my eyelid primer which is of course regular viewers will know this is my chrome pebble primer uh, but if I'm going too slowly for you there's a speed widget up there Feel free to use it. it. Really doesn't bother me at all. Uh, I'm going to talk through eye shapes in just a moment. So if you're a regular and you know what I'm going to say, just zoom forward until you see me wave a brush at you with some colour on it. Okay? Cool. Um, I do have a discount code for this primer. Well, for anything on Crown Pebble. Um, it's not affiliated. I don't earn from it. I've never sent me PR. That covers all the new guidelines in America. Hmm. Um, right, now I've got deep set eyes, which are sometimes referred to as double lidded eyes. And I have the same issues that people with hooded lids get, in that I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting the crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid. And when I'm wearing glitters, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch right through here. So a lot of people with deep set eyes mistakenly believe or are told they have hooded lids because we have the same issues. They are however two very, very different types of eye. I'm going to explain to you how to work out the difference and then I'm going to give you a workaround for each type of eye so that you can follow any tutorial you see on YouTube. Right. When I relax my brows and look straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it from inner to outer corner. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this static upper lid completely covers this mobile lid right down to the lash line that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Okay, I'm going to demo with this eye because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I can close it and still make sure I'm on screen and in focus. If I cover my visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see, thanks to that bit, that I've got as much space again, if not more, that tucks back away. And if I cover the static lid and do the same, you can see again there, I've got lid that tucks back away. And it's those bits of lid rubbing together that give me the issues that people with hooded lids get. I'm just trying to dry up some of this moisture so that this blooming ice primer can set. 
this is by far the best eye primer I've ever used folks um, and I'm not just saying that because I've got a discount code because I don't bloody earn from it I don't want to earn from it I'd rather save you the money um, it goes on dry so you can blend on it straight away and normally apart from days like today when my eye is deciding to bugger me about a little bit um, normally it doesn't crease on me at all and you don't have to set it which means you don't have that compromise between being able to blend straight away or having good colour payoff. So you can see all I do to put this on is I keep a fluffy blending brush I just rub it into the primer and then blend it out across my lid and hopefully it's stopped watering now or at least for long enough for me to get some colour on. Let's take off any excess on this side, I can't see a damn thing, I hope I'm still on the screen and haven't moved so no. Right. Yeah, that goes on totally dry, so I can blend on this straight away. Now, the workarounds. If you have hooded lids, i.e. if you can't see part of your mobile lid, get a brush something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch out on your upper lid where you want your new crease to fall. Obviously, this is going to reduce the space between your crease and your brow, so use slightly smaller blending brushes, um, or if necessary go right up to the brow line with the colour rather than leaving a gap which is what I tend to do if I'm not doing an editorial look. If however you have deep set eyes like I have all we have to do is when we're blending the colour through the crease stop, relax our brows and just check we've brought it up high enough that it can be seen when our eyes are open. So two very different workarounds that's why it's important to know which type of eye you have. Okay. So I'm going to go in with this blending tapered blending brush number 6 from the AliExpress set. It is clean, it's just stained. And I'm going to initially go into Stinger, which is the, uh, the lightest of all the yellow mattes in the uh -huh honey. Right, if you fast forward in, now's the time to stop. Well done. I always hold brushes right at the end to put as little pressure on my eyelid as possible. And here and here, I do have dry patches both eyes, which can sometimes cause me issues with blending. But I will let you know if it's the pigment or if it's my eye. So, starting off with very, very light circular blending motions, going in this direction towards the nose. Bit of a bounce when we get there. And then reverse the direction coming back out. And the reason we do that is because I'm 45 years old. I've lost 14 stone, which is just under 200 pounds, and uh, skin on my eyelids moves. But I know 20 year olds who have genetically loose, looser eyelids, and this gently moves the skin around so that you don't get the barcoding effect without having to pull your eye around. Now, sometimes I do have to stretch this eye out because these creases here that were caused by my eye being pulled around when I was five years old. Um, can cause me some problems. It's much better to put a little bit of pigment on and slowly build it up than it is to bang it all on in one go. It's much easier to add and blend than it is to try and blend when you've got it stuck somewhere, okay? Right, so I'm now going to do this on this side and chat to you a little bit about the lovely Marlin. Um, I follow quite a few Swedish YouTubers. Now, I don't know whether it's because the Swedish um, nation are inspired by the beautiful, beautiful scenery they've got, um, or whether it's just luck that the ones that I follow happen to love colour. Um, but all of the Swedish YouTubers that I follow, I list them all in my description box all the time. Um, they're all fantastic with using colour. None of them are frightened of using colour. And I discovered Marlin. Um, Angelica Nyqvist was the first one that I discovered. Through her I found Paulina. 
um, through her. I well, I found Jessica when I was doing my um, makeup collection, my eyeshadow collection, which I mustn't updo because I've got a load more palettes since then. Because um, I don't know if you know, but when you put films up and you tag them with certain metadata, uh, it brings other videos up by other people with similar tags, assuming you'd want to see them. Uh, and I, I, she'd kind of film up of like, I have 1200 palettes or 1400 palettes or something, and I just thought, yeah, it's got to be a mistype, it's got to be an, too many noughts on there. There wasn't too many more noughts on there. Um, and I just fell in love with Jessica's easy style and very, very calming voice. Um, I believe through Paulina I discovered Marlin and through Jessica I discovered Linda. Or it might be the other way around. But anyway, discovered Marlin and absolutely fell in love with the looks that she was doing. She is the most delicate, she's got the most delicate features, you know, it's like, if you were to imagine Midsummer Night's Dream with all the fairies dancing around, if you picture a fairy's face, what you would imagine for a beautiful, wistful, delicate fairy, that's Marlin. She has got that kind of bone structure, she's just a stunning woman. Um, and she's got kids and she still manages to look absolutely amazing. I don't know how she does it. Uh, I struggle to look halfway decent and I haven't got kids, unless you count the husband. Right, I'm going to, I've just cleaned the brush off on a clean washcloth. I'm moving away from, or I've moved away from using colour switches. They're far too hot on, on your brush source, especially if you're using natural head. These aren't, these are synthetic, but I much prefer a washcloth or a microfiber cloth to clean them off when I'm just bumming them in the washing machine. Right, I'm going to go into Sweet Spot, which is a brighter yellow. And I'm just going to add this a little bit further down. Using the same circular motion and the same brush. I'm going to do that on both eyes. Um, and Marlin very often collabs with Jessica and Linda um, and they have they have a series that the three of them do together. I just love watching it. She's got a lovely voice as well, very soft, very sweet, very very kind of it's difficult to describe but Perfect bedside manner, so you know, if you if you woke up in hospital because you were ill or you'd been in an accident or something, that's the sort of calming voice that you, you'd want to hear when you wake up telling you everything's going to be alright and you would believe everything's going to be alright, you know? So, yeah, and like I said, she does, her channel was initially all in Swedish and she's recently gone to um, speaking in English, which... I mean, the fact that they are their English is better in a lot of cases than a lot of people I know for whom English is their main language is <laughs> quite amazing. Um, I'm just going to dip back into Stinger, the lighter shade, just on the tips of the bristles, just to buff where the two shades meet, just so we don't get a harsh line there. I want it to really sort of fade up and out. That's pretty. And then back into Sweet Spot again for the other eye. So yes, Marlin sent quite a few photos through. We've done quite a few collabs together now. Um, I was a little nervous to ask her at first because I thought, oh, she doesn't have a clue who I am, you know. Um, I followed her for a while and I'd commented on a few of her videos. And then um, she commented on a film that I'd done, that, that Jessica and I had done together, uh, a photo inspiration, and she commented on Jessica's one. Um, that's what I mean about the barcoding. Do not stretch your eye out unless you absolutely have to, only stretch it as far as you need to, and as soon as you've blended, let go. Um, and she commented 
on Jessica's uh, film, and Jessica said, "You should, you should collab with Angie too. You'd love it." So that kind of made me brave enough to message her saying, "If you'd like to collab, I'd really love to." Um, and uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very pleased to count her as one of my Swedish friends now. That's one of the nicest things that YouTube has done for me because when you live with chronic pain, it's very isolating. You can't go out and about as much as you used to. You can't go out as often as you want to meet friends because you just don't have the energy. If you've got the energy to get ready, you then haven't got the energy to get there, spend time with them and get back again, you know? Um, and this is, this is one of the really good things that YouTube has done for me. It's, it's given me a whole new wealth of friends that I would never have met without doing this. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad I started my channel. It may not be the biggest channel in the world, but I know that I'm helping people. I, I see the comments that people put on there about I've had a couple of people, I had one person say that she's losing her eyesight so she got her husband to sit down with her and watch some of my films because I explain things so easily so that when she can no longer do her makeup he can do it for her thank goodness I haven't done my base yet because every time I say that it makes me well up, it really does just having a quick sip of my milk Right. I'm going to use a, what they call a contour brush number nine now, but it's basically a, it's a blending brush, but it's more densely packed. This eye is still watering. Right, I'm going to go into the Mar palette, and I'm going to go into that top down shade that I showed you earlier, the really lovely chocolate, lovely cool tone brown. I really wasn't going to get this Mar palette initially and then I looked at it again and thought well actually it's it's quite a sensible palette because you've got the diagonal of blooms and then you've got three warm tone shades above it and three cool tone shades below it so it's actually quite a sensible palette um, and what I'm going to do with this I'm going to very gently buff this through the crease because this is the the tree trunks from the picture and this is what I meant about if you've got deep set eyes just relax and make sure you've brought it up high enough that it can be seen which I have which is great and now what I'm going to do now is really just just buff along really softening the edges of that brown and just making sure there's no sort of scrappy patchy areas I have to admit I do like these Colourpop 9 pan palettes but I wish they were in cardboard and not in plastic that's my only, only issue. That and the fact they keep putting bloody press glitters in the bars of things. I apologise for swearing. It's late. I'm in pain. And it just annoys the hell out of me that everyone keeps whinging and saying, we don't want pressed glitters in them. And colour up like, oh, we'll put two pressed glitters in the next one then, shall we? Just listen to what people want. And I'm going to add a little bit more of that just on the outer edge of my mobile lid. Just to add a little bit of depth on the outer corner there because anything dark recedes, anything light comes forward. So if you've had to create a crease, Putting a dark shade along that, that part and blending the edges out and really diffusing the edges will give you the illusion, 
from a distance. Obviously it won't work if they're right up close, but it'll give you the illusion from a distance that your eye does recede at that point, it does go back in. Which is why you will normally see a darker colour put through the crease. Hmm. This is a really, really nice brown. You can see a little bit easier when I'm doing this side because obviously I can close this eye completely. But this eye does move an awful lot more. It's amazing, the fact that this was pulled around when I was five years old, the difference between the, the tautness of the skin, both sides, is ridiculous. Um, Forty years ago, uh, my eye was pulled around for about six months while I tried to work out I wasn't seen properly with it. Um, and I didn't really notice a huge difference until I hit about 41, 42 I suppose. And that's when I first noticed that I was getting more fallout with this eye was the first thing I noticed because obviously the lid moves more so it casts shadow off more. I'm struggling this side because where my eye is watering it's making this matte moist which is making it more difficult to blend but I am persevering because I'm stubborn like that. Maybe about as good as I'm going to get it though. Let's see if I can get some of that blended out a little bit better. These really deep creases that I've got here only came out over the last sort of couple of years. So initially it was, I noticed a lot more fallout this side. And then a couple of years into that I noticed that I was getting super super deep creases here and one of the issues with these creases is whatever colour I put onto the lid, whether it's a matte or a shimmer, I have to stretch the lid out otherwise the pigment gathers loosely in those deep creases rather than being blended out smooth and then throughout the day as I move my eye, it'll cascade down my face, which is not good. But, you're just going to have to forgive me a little bit with this eye if it's a little bit patchy. Um, I am doing the best I can with its wateriness that it's deciding to do on me today. We were down at the coast earlier and it was very, very brisk. Um, to the point that our planned photo shoot didn't happen because it was just too windy and the spray was just too much. But I had a really good road trip anyway. Right, I'm going to go into the Blue Moon palette. I'm going to use a different brush. I'm not going to use one of the brushes from the um, AliExpress set. This is one of the Jeffrey Morphe brushes but it wasn't in a set, they were selling these ones on their own. This is the JS24, it's actually a lip brush but it's great for getting down into the inner corner here. Now, never ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush, however once I have got the pigment on the brush I will be giving it a bit of a spritz with this Wet n Wild Photo Focus Primer Spray. So I'm going to go into Lumi in the Blue Moon palette. Now, you can use any liquid when you do this. You can use priming water like I'm using. Um, you can use a moisturising spray like Mac Fix Plus or Mario Badescu. 
you can use a sitting spray, a finishing spray, you can even use clean water from the tap in a spritz bottle because all you're doing is wetting the pigment. Now once you have wet the pigment, always dry this ferrule off. The easiest way to do that is put it in the crook of your fingers and just twist it. Because the last thing you want is moisture getting down here and loosening the bristles on your brush because then you won't have a brush anymore. Right, so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to look down into a little mirror here to do this side. Alright, so I'm going to pop this right in that inner corner there and drag it across the eyelid. Now this is not foiling your shadow. You will hear bigger YouTubers say, I'm foiling my shadow, I'm applying the shadow, this is not foiling your shadow, this is applying the shadow wet. To foil the shadow you actually have to have loose pigment, either that you've scraped off of a pressed pigment or that you've got as a loose pigment anyway, and then you mix it in a bowl or a dish with a mixing medium to create either a liquid or a paste to apply it. That is foiling your shadow. This is applying the shadow wet. And I'm just really gently buffing with the tip of these bristles and dragging some of that matte brown across onto the end of the bright colour there. But can you see the effect that's given? Hopefully that looks a little bit like the snow in the picture. Right, just clean and dry the brush off. Go back into that pigment again to do the other eye. One of the things I like about this Blue Moon palette, if you can't afford Jeffrey's Blue Blood, which I have got, but I wanted to use more cost effective ones today, this is a great dupe for it, or a great um, alternative, you can get very similar looks with it. And there's no pressed shimmer, no pressed glitter in this one. Yay! Right, I'm just going to stretch this lid out a little bit just to do the inner corner as I discussed earlier. You will see what I mean in a minute when I let go just how much that lid has had to stretch out. So the colour is to here, yeah? No, it's back here. So that gives you an indication of just how deep that crease goes. See, this is so pretty. I'm glad that I used this instead of the highlight because this has got slightly more blue tinge to it and it's a bit more opaque than the highlight is. I was very tempted to use the Jeffrey highlight from the Platinum Ice palette. And of course you can do that if you've not got an icy one. You can always lay um, a light blue down, something like this, and then put just blend with a very loosely packed buffing brush over the top. Blend a white highlighter over the top of it. And it will give you a very, very similar effect. There we go. I'm really liking this. Right, I'm going to pause you while I go off and do my brows and put some foundation on and whatnot and all those other good things and I will be back to continue this eye look with you. Now for you my darlings there will be absolutely no delay at all. I however will have to wait until the next time I press record to chat with you again. So I'll see you now. Hello, I am back. Okie dokie. I am going to go into the Mar palette with my flat top brush we discussed earlier and I'm going to go into that chocolate top down shade. I'm just going to join it up on the outside there and 
run it along the lower lash line. In a bit of a decadent manner. I don't tend to put things in my waterline because, well, as you can tell, I've got very watery eyes anyway. Um, the fibre just makes it worse. It's like I've only wear a contact lens for about three hours now, whereas I used to be able to wear them for a lot longer than that. So, yay. I do sometimes put things in my waterline, but that's mainly just for photos, and then it's literally, it's absolute agony for me. Right, this is the, um, it's actually the Tarte Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen Palette brush. And I like it because it's flat top but it's chunky. And I'm going to go into Buzzkill in Ahahani, which is the deepest shade in this palette. They really missed out not putting the chocolate brown in this palette. And I'm just going to use that. Gently buff it out of that lower lash line to kind of be the side of the trees that the sunlight is reflecting off of. So just slightly lighter, light lighter brown, but. With a real tinge of yellow from that beautiful sunlight just dappling through the trees. Yeah. That's a little bit lush, isn't it? That was a little bit Welsh, isn't it? Right. I got a message the other day on my Instagram from someone saying, Welsh scum. How very original of you, sir, without an avatar. <laughs> Right, this is the brush from, it's actually just a lip brush that I bought from um, eBay about a decade ago. But it's great. And I'm going to go into my Ofra Nikki Tutorials Glazed Donut to be the bright white snow element. I'm just going to pop that up under my brow. This is actually, my Ice Cold by Jeffree Star used to be my brightest white highlight. Then I tried this and I'm like, oh, she, she went there. She definitely went there. Uh, when I do my inner corner, I do like to bring it down and just sort of blend it in with the colours that I put along under my eye. I just think it finishes the look off nicely. You can just do you in a corner though if you don't want to do that. I just think with my eye shape that's a pretty way to finish it. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time my darlings while I chuck some more highlight on in many, many, many places on my face. Um, put some mascara on once my eye stops running. <laughs> put a lippy on do something with the windswept hair and I'll be right back again for you no delay hello I am back my hair is actually behaving itself for once seems going to the coast and getting it blown about so much I thought it was going to leave my head makes it behave who knew um, obviously I put the same highlight on my face, as you can tell from the fact that I am glowing so bright, the gods won't even be able to see what I'm up to. Uh, <laughs> mascara is my Catrice Glamondale Waterproof Volume Mascara. I say this every time, it's a dupe for Bad Girl Bang, but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. I know Bad Girl Bang now have a waterproof version, but this is still cheaper. Uh, the Lippy is one of the Shane Jeffrey collabs in I Gotta Go. I just thought the bronzy metallic kind of is the tree with the sunlight reflecting off of it. So, I will put the picture here again. What do you think have I done in terms of recreating 
or do a look inspired by the palette because the only rules with the collab are that you can only use colours in the palette. So I couldn't add a green, I couldn't add a pink, I couldn't add a deep purple or a black because they're not in the picture. But you don't have to use all of them. So I could have just done a pure yellow look or a pure blue white look. But I, I actually, I really like how this look has turned out. I'm quite, quite surprised actually because I wasn't entirely sure. After I'd chosen it, I'm like, how the heck am I going to do that one? So, if you're one of my 4F babies, please, please double check. You are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people left, right and centre. Every time I put a film up, I lose people. I don't know. It, it, I'm not a numbers girl, but it is very disheartening. when, Because when you're this small, you notice when you lose even one subscriber, let alone... I think one day I lost about five. I gained three back, but that's not the point. Um, and once you have either liked or disliked this film and left me a comment, if you dislike, tell me why. What was it you didn't like? Did you not like the palettes I used? Did you not like the picture? Did you not like the eye look? Or did you just not like me? Because if you don't tell me, how am I going to improve? But once you've done all those good things, I'm going to need you to go across to the beautiful Marlin and check out her channel and see exactly what look she has done inspired by the picture. She will probably have blown my look totally out of the water. I mean, so far, I think this is now episode, I think, 37, I think it is now. And so far there's only been two looks that have been even vaguely similar. And even they were different enough that they were different looks. Um, and it's one of the things that I love about this series. Because it shows how you can be inspired by different things in a picture. And how it's okay to be inspired by different things. You don't have to... The beauty guru, Tati's picked up this palette and she's done this look, so that's the look I've got to do, but I really want to use XYZ shadow, but she said that wouldn't work. Try them. It's your face, it's your artwork, it's only makeup. If you try it and you don't look it, don't like the look of it, you can just wash it back off again. But some of the... Some of my favourite looks that I have done have been complete accidents when I've just been playing with a palette not knowing what look I'm going to do. So, if you are here from Marlin's channel, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it. A uh, little different style from hers, uh, but I'm guessing if you made it this far you must have enjoyed something about the film. Uh, I've got lots of other films you can watch if you wanted to watch a few more before you decide but if you have decided that you actually quite like this slightly nutty bird who witters on about all kinds of things as she slaps colourful makeup on her face then I would be delighted if you two would press that subscribe button and join the 4F family. We are one of the nicest families on YouTube. Mm. Right. Shh. Roofed. All that remains for me to say as ever is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.